everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, right now we're going to do our virtual therapy dog visit. Now for those of you that don't know me, my name is Shannon and I have my two special friends here. Uh, this is Doxy and this is Fozzie Bear and they're both certified with Therapy Dogs International. We're out of the Fresno chapter, chapter 220. And these guys um, are actually the first certified double team for Therapy Dogs International in the Central Valley. So they can both visit at the same time when we go out to our library. Now their personal uh, preference is to uh, visit with kids. So we usually visit with uh, schools and libraries. Every Saturday uh, we visit at the Bear Mountain Library and the Reedley Library. So that's our typical places where we go. Uh, but we have visited at uh, hospitals, we visited uh, at nursing homes and retirement communities too. Right so we do some of that, but uh, most of the time we like to hang out with the kiddos because that's their preference. But they love everybody. <laughs> Isn't that right? We love, we love you, good boy. So our first book is actually one that uh, we got from a Facebook uh, thing. It's called Fozzie and Doxy's Petlandia Road Trip, written by Steve Cleverly and illustrated by Katja Hammond. So this is actually something that you can do with your pets at home. Uh, you can go to Petlandia.com and uh, they put your pets into the story. And we gave it a try and we saw it on Facebook. And so actually they have several different ones you can do and the story is pretty cute. So the boys like to read that one. So since it's their first visit, uh, we thought we'd start off with that. All right, you guys ready to read? Yeah? All right, you ready? Good. Fozzie, you ready? Good job. All right, Fozzie and Doxy's Petlandia Road Trip. Welcome to Petlandia, a crazy world where any pet can become a star, including yours. From New York to Hollywood, Amsterdam to Barcelona, this possum place is the dream destination for starstruck pets everywhere. It says to Fozzie, Doxy, Shannon, and Jeff, we hope you enjoy sharing this story with your readers at the library. Jeff's my husband. It has some pictures here of what Petlandia looks like. Fozzie and Doxy were furry friends who dreamt of far-flung places, of going on vacation and licking famous faces. They weren't unhappy, stressed, or bored, or even tired of bones. They just kept seeing photos of Petlandia on their phones. So one day, when the coast was clear, they set off on a trip and headed to the seaside where they snuck aboard a ship. You might imagine pets would feel all groggy on a cruise, but not this pair. They dozed and chilled while gazing at the views. Peering from a porthole, Fozzie spotted land, and Doxy couldn't wait to do a tinkle in the sand. And they sent us a postcard. Arf, arf, ahoy, Shannon and Jeff. We're on our way to Petlandia. Don't forget to water the street light while we're away. Woofity woof, XOXO. Love from Fozzie and Doxy. Pretty hard to find a street light where we live, though. We live out in the mountains. Huh. They scampered to the sun deck and checked on Poodle Maps to see where they should go to find some dinner or some scraps. The docks were pretty empty, so they rummaged through the trash, but what they really needed was to earn some proper cash. They hit the beach and did a little busking by the fair, and thanks to their peculiar act, they soon had funds to spare. Both pets were keen on Hollywood. They'd heard that it was fab. So they wandered into New York and flagged a passing cab. Hey there, Shannon and Jeff. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. Wish you were here. This place is magnificent. Stay possum, XXX. 
Hello from Foggy and Doc. Cruising down the freeway, Fozzie took some snaps while Doxy flicked through Instapaw and other pet based apps. Let's put a giant frisbee out in the desert. Let me explain frisbee. That's weird. They drove through San Fran biscuits and sped through Hamsterdam. They even saw Mount Rushpaw and the famous Rover Dam. They posed for loads of photos, which they put on social media and even got an entry of their own on Wagipedia. Arriving late in Hollywood, both pets were truly smitten. The streets were crammed with cats and dogs, and hamsters played with kittens. They made new friends, they went to clubs, and hung out on the scene. But Hollywood's a crazy place. You'd know that if you'd been. Hello, Shannon and Jeff. Hooray for Hollywood! What a possum place! We're off to a party! Miss you, XXX. Love from Fozzie and Ducks. That's water break. Fozzie loved to party hard, but Doxy found it boring. And sometimes when they stayed out late, the banter prompted snoring. Eventually, the pair fell out and went their separate ways. Fozzie schmoozed with superstars while Doxy met some strays. These rascals didn't want to play or fetch old balls and sticks. They wanted phones and money, leaving Doxy in a fix. Around this time, Fozzie realized something wasn't right. Friendship can't be beaten, even if you've had a fight. And that's very true. You do love to party hard, huh, Fozzie? <laughs> and Doxy likes to go to bed early. So Fozzie packed a suitcase and jumped aboard a bus and finally found poor Doxy. There was plenty to discuss. Agreeing to kiss and make up, they hitchhiked to the coast. This trip had helped them realize what they really wanted most. It wasn't parties, fancy friends, or fiddling with an app. It was curling up with loved ones and snuggling on a lap. Shannon and Jeff, we miss you so much and want to come home. Hope to see you soon. Hugs. XXX. Love, Fozzie and Doxy. The pets revived their circus act and raised a pile of dough. They even got back Doxy's things from a bulldog in the know. Fozzie used their newfound wealth to rent a private jet as Doxy still felt pretty rough and had to see a vet. Oh, poor Doxy. Arriving home was wonderful, and Doxy soon felt fine. Then both of them held paws and said, Where first, your place or mine? Life goes on in Hollywood. It's such a possum place, even though some tourists often struggle with the pace. But Doxy still sleeps soundly and Fozzie doesn't care. Their journey to Petlandia is a memory they can share. Doxy and Fozzie's Petlandia photo gallery. All different pictures from their trip. Travel is magnificent wherever you may roam, but the greatest place for any pet is in a loving home. As Fozzie loves Doxy. Oh. The end. Well, what do you think? Was that a good story? <coughs> I thought that was good too. Doxy, did you like that? <coughs> I know you liked it. With everything that's going on right now, you know, a lot of things are changing, and we can't go to the national parks right now and visit those beautiful trees. But those sequoias, some of them are, you know, even as much as two or 3,000 years old. So they've seen so many changes. They've seen a lot of different things happen. And so I thought it'd be good to read a story a little bit about those sequoia trees. Because even though 
We're having all these changes happen. We'll get through it, just like the sequoias were able to get through it. Isn't that right, Doxy? Good boy. Okay. You think that's a good idea, Fozzie? Good job. Okay. Let's get ready to do the next one. Okay, this one's called The Sequoia Lives On. And it's by Joanna Cook, illustrated by Fiona Hissif. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Because she has some beautiful pictures in this book. It's one of my favorites. And there's a lot of them that have a picture of an owl hidden in the picture. So keep an eye out for that owl. All right, the sequoia lives on. See, there's that owl up in the corner. The sequoia lives on. Giant sequoias are living wonders. In groves scattered along the Sierra Nevada, a mountain range in California, sequoias dwarf all their neighbors. No other trees are as tall and wide and magnificent. Stand beneath a sequoia and anything seems possible. Gaze into its branches and wonder how the sequoia lives on. The sequoia is Earth's most massive tree, the height of three blue whales stacked chin to tail and weighing even more. It begins life, as most trees do, as a seed, a flake no bigger than an ant. How does such a tiny seed grow into a tree as heavy as 300 elephants? That's even bigger than you, Fozzie, huh? You're a pretty big boy. Just a little bit. That's just close to the front. The sequoia seed relies on fire. A blaze crawls on the forest floor, clearing away fallen leaves and broken branches in which a seed might disappear. Rising heat from the fire warms the sequoia's scaly cones, drying and opening them, then setting the brown seeds adrift in smoke-filled air, floating toward a place to grow. On newly uncovered soil, a seed rests in a shaft of sunlight. Roots anchor it to the ground, and the seedling grows up and up toward golden beams shining through the canopy, the highest layer of branches in the forest. Up and up, the seedling reaches for the sunlight that has traveled all the way from the sun to the earth. Sequoia leaves take in that sunlight and also air. Exhale, and your breath could become food for a sequoia. And the sequoia lives on. <laughs> you might have heard a meow. Our cats are just off screen watching this reading session, too. When fire is absent in a sequoia grove, the seeds rely on other help. Furry chicories grip the bark with little claws in search of a sequoia cone's green scales to feast on. The seeds, too small for a meal, fall to the ground and, with luck, may sprout. The longhorn beetle lays its eggs on a cone. When the larvae hatch, they eat through the scales and part of the stem, causing the cone to dry and open. Again, the seeds fall. Buried in the earth, a sequoia's roots reach outward, creating a hidden foundation as wide as the tree is tall. Each day, a large sequoia's roots absorb enough water to fill more than eight bathtubs. From across the forest, a sequoia's colorful bark almost glows, thicker at the tree's base than at the top. The spudgy bark swells into buttresses that support the sequoia's growing bulk. Oh, 
How long will it take for a sequoia seedling to become so big? Humans can live more than 80 years, a mere blink in the life of a sequoia. After two human lifetimes, a sequoia will have grown old enough to make cones. With enough sunlight, air, and water, a mighty sequoia can live more than 30 human lifetimes. Imagine a sequoia so old and so huge, not even a ring of 20 children holding hands could hug it. Some are even grander, giants among giants. An old sequoia's trunk may be hollowed out by fire. Its crown, once pointed like a pyramid, is now a snag top, broken by lightning and wind. Lower branches grow upward, filling openings in the canopy. The expanded crown holds more leaves, which means more food for growing. Even black and scarred, an old sequoia can produce a gallon of tiny seeds, more than 300,000 each year, and the sequoia lives on. Over time, such immensity can harm an ancient sequoia. Season after season, its branches thicken and grow heavy. Broader than nearby pines and cedars, the great branches overwhelm the damaged trunk and shallow roots, and the sequoia falls. Shaking the ground upon impact, the tree shatters into car-sized blocks and toothpick tiny pieces, and still the sequoia lives on. Stretched across the forest floor, the fallen sequoia decomposes over hundreds of years. The massive trunk now rests side by side with new seedlings, reaching for golden beams of light. The cycle of giants begins again with one tiny seed. You can help protect giant sequoias too. When visiting a sequoia grove, practice these leave no trace principles. Respect trail signs in closed areas, leave sequoia cones and seeds on the ground, take all trash, even picnic, picnic crumbs with you. Your family or school class can also help by joining a conservation group or volunteering. Most importantly, learn all you can about our living planet. The future of giant sequoias will depend on young people like you continue to care for these amazing trees. Very cool. All right. So for the next part of the program here, we wanted to do a, a few of our tricks. Well, these guys know a whole bunch of different tricks and they love kind of showing them off and... Uh, Making people laugh and, and cheer. They love that kind of stuff. So we'll get them up. And uh, since we are in our own backyard, I'm going to go ahead and take off their leashes here. It's a little bit easier for them to do their tricks when they are unleashed. And we are doing an official demonstration after all. So, <laughs> so we can do our treats. We'll also show you guys a little bit about uh, training your dog. So, of course, these guys are therapy dogs. Yes, thank you, Fozzie. That is a trick that they know. Um, so, therapy dogs, they visit in places, like I said, libraries, hospitals, schools. And their job is to basically make people happy and, and joyful. So, it's not like a service dog where they, uh, you know, lead around someone who's blind or help someone who... Uh, needs to get around or anything like that, so it's, it's different. They're for everybody, not just for one person. But they still need to be very well trained in order to be a therapy dog. So some of the things that they learn is how to sit, lie down, come, and stay. And a few of those tricks and some of the other things that they know. So I mentioned that they both need to know how to sit. Good job. Okay, and then they have to know how to lie down. You ready? Lie down. Good job. Yes. Okay. Down. All right. 
day. And come. Good job. Good boy. So even though those are things that therapy dogs need to know, it's also something that's very important for your dogs at home to know, too. Especially how to stay. So let's say maybe that you're taking your dog for a walk and, uh-oh, your leash breaks. You want to make sure that you can say stay to your dog so that he won't get run into, into the road or something where he might get hurt. So we'll start, uh, I can teach you guys a little bit of how to teach your own dog at home while you guys are at home. So you don't, if your dog doesn't know these already. So we'll start with sit. So you get something that your dog really likes. Ozzy loves these treats. These are called pet botanics. I get them from PetSmart. But anything that your dog likes, uh, and sometimes if your dog doesn't like food rewards, you can use praise or petting or maybe his favorite toy. Something that they really like as a reward. Now we use what's called positive reinforcement. It means that they get treats or, or good things when they do what we want them to do. You can see he's licking my hand. He's all excited about this treat. So what you do is you put the treat over his head and it'll rock his bottom back because he's going to be looking at that treat going over his head. And as soon as his bottom hits the ground, then you can give him the treat or his reward. So you have to do it within about three seconds. Otherwise, the dog won't know what you're giving him the food for. So you go over his head, he rocks back, and you can give him the treat. So you don't start off saying the word sit because it'd be like trying to say blah, blah, blah to you like you don't know what that means. But once they get the idea that if they rock their back and they like they sit down like that and then they get food, then you can start adding in the word a little bit later. And eventually you can add in the hand signal. Our hand signal for sit is this. So you can choose whatever hand signal works for you and your dog. Good job, folks. So they also know a few other tricks, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So one of the tricks that they know is that one, is speak. Good job, Fozzie. And then, of course, Dr. He's making noise so you can't hear him because he's very quiet. They also know how to say paw or how to do paws up, which is good if they're visiting maybe in a hospital or, a, you know, um, somewhere where people can't reach them, like maybe in a, they're in a bed or, or a wheelchair or something. So you can say paws up. And you can do it on me or on something else. And now they're high up, and so they can reach the person that they want to visit. Okay. Good job. And then Doxy can even do pause up onto his brother. Doxy, can you pause up, please? Good day. So we call them brothers, even though they're not related by blood. We think that Fozzie is a golden retriever husky mix, and Doxy, we think it's a Doxy Chihuahua Shizu mix. Now, Doxy also loves to jump over stuff, so he jumps over everything, including his brother. <laughs> so that's one of his favorite tricks to do. And Fozzie likes to do all kinds of stuff. Oh, oh. Bang! Good job, that's his playing dead. And Doxy knows how to do that one too. Bang! I know. Bang! Ozzy says you missed. Did I miss? <laughs> Good job. Okay, let's go. Pull out. Bring it to the chin. Good job. Chin. Good. And then Doxy, because he looks like Chewbacca from Star Wars, say okay. We taught him how to do a Wookiee walk. So he walks on his hind legs like Chewbacca does. Good job. One more time. Good job. Okay, so far. So far as you can also do square dancing. So he stays pretty close to me here. We go back and up. We'll rotate around. Good. And then we go to our partners. Good job. Okay. And then you want to end with one more jump? Alright. Over the top. Good job. Good boy. Alright, okay, so we'll go back on leash here for our next book. You can see that Doxy also has Chewbacca stuff. He has 
Chewbacca leash and has a lunch box that we need to. Come on, Fuzzy. Come on, Fuzzy Bear. Come on. Fuzzy found his favorite toy in the backyard. <laughs> Good boy. He knows. He loves that toy. Okay. Let's go ahead and lie down and listen to our next story. Ready, Doxy? Lie down. So we wanted to make sure that all ages of readers uh, get to have a really nice time with our program. So our next one is going to be a book for a little bit older readers. It's one that I really liked from when I was little. It's called Time Cat by Lloyd Alexander. It's about this kitty named Gareth, and he is a very special cat. And uh, we actually have the real life Gareth. Uh, we named one of our cats after the, the cat from the story who's sitting over there with his kitty friends. So he's the black cat that's in the back behind the black and white cat, if you can see him in the back over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a chapter or a section of this book at a time. So every session we'll get a little bit further in the story. And it starts off with my favorite start to a book. Gareth was a black cat with orange eyes. Sometimes when he hunched his shoulders and put down his ears, he looked like an owl. When he stretched, he looked like a trickle of oil or a pair of black silk pajamas. When he sat on a window ledge, his eyes half shut and his tail curled around him, he looked like a secret. He belonged to a boy named Jason who loved him and believed Gareth could do anything in the world. As things turned out, Jason was right. Not entirely, but almost. It happened this way. In the middle of a sunny afternoon, Jason sat in his room on the end of his bed with his chin in his hands and wished the past five minutes had never happened. Downstairs, in the space of that time, he had accomplished the following. 1. Spilled paint on the dining room table. 2. Dropped his model airplane and stepped on it. 3. Coated the inside of one pocket of his jacket with glue when the tube he had been saving for emergencies had come uncapped. 4. Torn his shirt. 5. Punched his younger brother in the ribs for laughing at him. 6. Talked back to his mother, who had not agreed his brother needed punching. 7. Begun to cry, a thing Jason despised because he considered himself too old for it. There had been other details he preferred to forget, in any case, he had been told to go to his room, which he did, feeling put down and miserably sorry for himself. Gareth, who had been drowsing on top of Jason's pillow, uncurled and climbed onto the boy's lap. Jason stroked the cat and ran his finger over Gareth's only white spot on his chest, a T-shaped mark with a loop over the crossbar. Lucky Gareth, Jason sighed, lying back and closing his eyes. I wish I had nine lives. The cat stopped purring. I wish I did too, he said. Jason stared up in surprise, not because Gareth had spoken. Jason had always been sure he could if he wanted to. It was what Gareth had said. You mean you really don't have nine lives? Jason asked, disappointed. I'm afraid not, said the cat, in a very matter-of-fact way. But since you mention it, I'll tell you a secret. I only have one life. With a difference, I can visit. Visit, Jason said. Yes, Gareth went on. I can visit nine different lives. Anywhere, anytime, any country, any century. Oh, Gareth, Jason clapped his hands. Can all cats do that? Where do you think cats go when you're looking all over and you can't find them, Gareth replied. And have you ever noticed a cat suddenly appear in a room when you were sure that room was empty? or disappear and you can't imagine where he went? And you've actually gone to a lot of different countries, Jason asked. No, not yet, Gareth said. I've been waiting for, oh, I don't know, a special occasion, you might say. I never saw much sense in just going as a tourist. It's better to wait until there's some important reason. I guess you're right, Jason nodded. He looked over at Gareth. I was wondering if you thought there might be a special occasion coming up soon? There might be, said Gareth. Gareth, listen, Jason said eagerly. If it were a special occasion, and somebody else, somebody you liked, 
wanted very much to go, could you take him with you? Gareth did not answer immediately. He began looking like an owl and stayed that way for a while. Finally, he said, yes, I suppose I could. Would you take me? Gareth was silent again. I could take you with me, he said after a moment, but I have to warn you of this. You'd be on your own. You wouldn't have any kind of protection. Neither of us would. Naturally, I'd like to help you any way I could. We'd be able to talk to each other, but only when no one else was around. Aside from that, what happens, happens, and you couldn't change your mind in the middle. Oh, there's something else. Whatever you did, you wouldn't dare be separated from me for any length of time. Otherwise, you'd never see home again. Now, if you accept these conditions... Oh, Gareth, I accept. Are you sure? the cat asked. Think carefully. Jason nodded. Very well, said the cat. Look into my eyes. And he gave Jason a long, slow wink. <laughs> it looks like you're hanging at the end of your seat, huh? Are you, are you really excited to see what happens next? Well, we'll have to wait until next time. The next time, we're going to Egypt, 2700 BC. That's cool, huh? What do you think, Foz? Is that cool? <coughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll find out what happens to Gareth and Jason in Egypt next time. All right. So we still have a little bit of time. And since the sun's going down, it's getting closer to bedtime. I thought we could finish with another one of my favorite books, Sleep Like a Tiger. Tigers are one of my favorite animals. This is written by Mary Logue and illustrated by Pamela Zagorensky. And it also has beautiful pictures. Once there was a little girl who didn't want to go to sleep, even though the sun had gone away. She told her mother, I'm not tired. She told her father, I'm just not sleepy. They nodded their heads and said she didn't have to go to sleep, but she had to put her pajamas on. She picked out her favorite pair of pajamas that matched the night sky. I'm still wide awake, she announced. Her parents said that was fine, but she should wash her face and brush her teeth. She did. It felt good to be nice and clean. We all need to do that. Huh? Wash our face a lot right now. It's not right, Fox. <coughs> good. Yeah, we need to wash our face. Then, because she loved climbing into her bed, she did, stretching her toes down under the crisp sheets, lying as still as an otter floating in a stream. Does everything in the world go to sleep, she asked. Yes, her parents told her. Our dog is sleeping right now, curled up in a ball on the couch where he's not supposed to be. We know all about that. Doxy likes to sleep up on the couch. He has two couches, but he likes my couch the best. Doxy, can you show me where the dog is? Can you point to the dog in the story? Good job. Good boy. Show you guys where this the dog is. And the cat is fast asleep, stretched out in front of the fireplace, the warmest spot in the house. What about bats? she asked. They don't sleep. Not at night, her parents agreed, but during the day they fold their wings, tuck their heads, and sleep hanging upside down in the safest place in the barn. Do whales sleep, she asked. Yes, they swim slowly around and around in a large circle in the ocean and sleep. We've heard about the whales in two different books today. Tiny snails, she asked. They curl up like a cinnamon roll inside their shell. 
Even grizzly bears, she asked. Bears are mighty sleepers. They make a cozy den under the snow and sleep through the winter. All winter? That's too long, she said. Can you find the bear in the story? Lexi, can you point to the bear? Good job, good boy. Most animals just sleep through the night, her parents said, tucking her in. I know an animal that sleeps a lot, the little girl told them. What animal is that, her parents asked. The tiger in the jungle. When he's not hunting, he finds some shade, closes his eyes, and sleeps. That way, he stays strong. Her parents nodded. Sleep is good for that. Then they kissed her, turned out the light, and stood in the doorway. I'm still not sleepy, she told them. We know, they agreed. You can stay awake all night long. They left her door open a crack. But Doxy's getting a little sleepy too. Oh boy. The little girl's bed was warm and cozy, a cocoon of sheets, a nest of blankets. Unlike the dog on the couch, she was right where she was supposed to be. She wriggled down under the covers until she found the warmest spot, like the cat in front of the fire. She folded her arms like the wings of a bat. She circled around like the whale. And the curled up snail. Then she snuggled deep as a bear, a deep sleeping bear. Looks like you, Fozzie Bear. You know, you're like a big polar bear. Look at that. Look just like him. But you're a dog, huh? Not a bear. <laughs> and like the strong tiger fell fast asleep. And that's your dream. The end. Okay. Well, we have time for a few questions. Does anybody have any questions for us? Okay, so the question is, how long have we been a therapy dog team? Well, the first one to be a therapy dog was Doxy here. Uh, Doxy got his certification in 2014, so he's been doing it the longest. He's actually the oldest of the two as well. He's 10 years old, and Fozzie Bear is six and a half. Uh, Doxy's birthday was in March, so he just had a birthday not too long ago. And then Fozzie Bear here. He was the second one to get certified. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my love. I, I love you too. He was certified in 2017. So he's the younger of the two. And uh, as a double team, we actually just got certified the first part of March. So um, we've just been a double team for a very short time. We finally got our paperwork back from when we passed our test, all of us together. So it is... Uh, they have to go through a testing process in order to become therapy dogs. And they um, go through like a lot of different things. They have to be good around all different kinds of people. They have to be um, comfortable with medical equipment. They have to be really good with obedience. And so we had to do the test all over again with all three of us. So that way when I say like sit, they both have to sit at the same time. So it's, um, it's a little bit more complicated to be a double team. So we just got that passed very recently and unfortunately we didn't get our paperwork back until after all of this happened uh, so we haven't had an official therapy dog visit uh, as a double team yet you know, other than this uh, virtual therapy dog visit that's a good question though uh, another question anybody else okay so um the question was uh, does fozzy like uh tummy rubs uh, the answer is yes, he does. Doxy, can you by the way here for a second? I want to show off Fozzie's tummy rub. Here. here we go. Here, Doxy. Oh, by the way, so you can see. Oh, there's a tummy rub. Let's see if I can get the foot going. Oh, 
Oh, a little bit. There's a little bit. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> so yeah, she very much loves Sunny Rub. Come here, Fox. Oh, let's go back on our blankie. Maxie also likes tummy rubs, but uh, he's uh, he has to be in the mood for it. Lie down. Lie down. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll see you guys next time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope that you stay safe and happy and healthy with your families. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Uh, we'll be trying to do these uh, as many times as we can uh, so we can you know, bring a little bit of joy into your guys' lives. And we uh, hope to be able to get out and see you guys in person again very soon. And all of our other Therapy Dog chapter members, too, I can definitely speak for them that, uh, that they want to be able to get back out visiting uh, as soon as possible, as soon as it's safe, too. So, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Show them you love them. Show them you love them. Good. All right. Good boy. Foxy Bear, you want to say bye to the people? <coughs> good job. Oh, thank you. All right, boy. You did a good job. Don't leave me hanging. You can do better than that. You're a good one. Good job. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much.